everybody. Today I want to talk to you about Stockholm Syndrome, or um, also known as trauma bonding. As I'm talking, um, obviously, um, I'm thinking a lot about um, how all these topics relate to my what's happened, this tragedy with my my son dying, and um, and you know eventually, eventually. Um, that isn't going to be the thing that is at the forefront of my mind all the time, but right now it is. And, and um, you know, really, the point of this channel, even before this happened, I had, you know, I certainly had traumatized kids, and um, you know, that was a big reason for my coming on here and doing a YouTube channel in the first place. So, you know, so I'm talking about trauma bonding. I want you to think about what this is like as a child, because it is inherent in the relationship. It is inherent that this would happen in a relationship. So Stockholm Syndrome comes from a, um, a an experience that happened during a bank robbery in, Sto in Stockholm, Sweden, where after it was over, they, um, the police found that the victims of the crime were, or the, you know, people that were held hostage there actually developed a fondness for their captors, for their perpetrators. They found them, you know, wanting to defend them. And so this, they kind of did a study on it and then also found that, that when it came to narcissistic abuse, this was a huge factor. And so, um, so Stockholm Syndrome really breaks down to, ha it has four, there has to be four, four basic components for it to qualify as, as Stockholm Syndrome. And the first one of these is a perceived um, threat to your life. So um, like the, the, this person is actually can has the power for you, for you to live or die when you're talking about children this is very real you know this is very real and the, the when the trauma began with my sons they were actually separated from me for a short time and my and i had actually almost died myself i actually almost died and they knew that and then their father told them that i did die and he didn't answer the phone, and I was separated from them. They didn't have any contact with me for about three months, and for that period of time, they thought that I was dead. And for the next year, they were with their dad almost full time, and their life did depend on him. It was it was completely dependent on him, and you know, so they were their life was dependent on this person who was self-absorbed, angry all the time, manipulative, neglectful. And their extended family didn't come in to protect them, didn't come in to uh, help their mother, didn't come in to soften the blows for them. They also were ganged up on their mother and also were, you know, just they were also so self-absorbed. It was a narcissistic family. There wasn't anyone in their midst that had proper empathy for them. And then even further out was just, People who had just bad judgment, apathetic people, that you know, people that just just didn't go out of their way, you know, um, godparents that just disappeared. It was just this, you know, people in the community didn't didn't take proper care of the kids, and they, and so they were not they were not um, protected, and I was unable to protect them. And my biggest my you know my biggest regret is that I did such a bad job of protecting myself for this short period of time. It was a short period of time. I mean, I, I got, I'm not going to, I can't beat myself up because I was a really good mom, a dedicated mom, but I didn't know what I was up against. I didn't know who I was, I didn't know what I was, who I was married to. And this whole thing turned into a, just a disaster. And I was just sideswiped and it took me a little bit of time. It took me, um, it took me about a year or so to get my feet under me and to kind of start getting, you know, getting myself together. And that was pretty remarkable that I even did it that fast because, you know, I, I mean, he, he took me down. But, you know, so with children, that was a very real, real feeling. The second piece is there's these perceived acts of kindness. And these can be just little, little um, kindnesses. And the advice that, of course, that they give for adults is, don't accept kindness from an abuser, right? Well, when you're a kid, what are you going to do? Of course, you're going to accept a kindness from an abuser. First of all, the abuser is your parent, you know, and you're you only you have you're relying on them, you're dependent on them, 
and everything is like working against you as a kid because you want you're wanting to believe the best about this person you need to believe the best about this person your survival depends on them being a decent person so every time they show you the slightest kindness it erases everything you want to believe that they're that you want to believe that that's going to last it doesn't go away you know how it is the things that get ingrained in us as kids it takes a long time as an adult to kind of come out of that and so my son at only 20 he's still he didn't have he didn't have the perspective on his father and his family that he was going to have at 35 you know it was different than it was at 10 but you know it wasn't it, it you know it was developing but it it wasn't it, in fact in fact it might have been even more confused than it was at 10 because at 10 at 10 he hadn't done things he was blaming himself for as much but by the time he was 20 you know he was already uh, blaming everything on himself you know that he was you know a drug addict and he was he was doing bad things and so he you know made that everything and it, it wasn't everything it was a symptom of things that came before it but so you know so the acts of kindness they can be maybe grumpy and, and aggressive and abusive and neglectful for weeks and then come home one day and feel kind of good and 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 play Xbox with them or, or with the kids or you know have some good time or especially have a good time in front of people because you know they will be they will be nicer in front of other people so you get like this little dose you get like little little doses and you know this is also how it, the, the addiction is so similar he just transferred his addiction from this addictive relationship with this narcissistic abusively a narcissistically abusive parent to to drugs and he, you know the drugs were to cope but he would dose him out just enough kindness to keep him hooked. And I know he did that because he did the same thing to me. I know how it worked. There would be an isolation from outside perspectives. So this was this was the being nice in front of other people and um, and then also chipping down their self-esteem at home so that they were um, protective of of them, not telling not talking to other people about it, thinking that um, no one would really understand or no one would believe them um, which actually kind of plays into the next one also which is perceived inability to escape and that has to do with you know not thinking that anyone is going to believe them and as a kid also not feeling like you can escape it's feeling like you know your your parent is so all all empowering you don't think you think you can never be an equal to to that parent to that to that power to that um you'll never be an equal to it and and you'll never escape it. You'll never, you'll never be better than it. You'll never overcome it. You'll never um, not need this, this love from them that's never coming. The Stockholm Syndrome, I don't think anyone's really ever talked about it and how it develops with children because it's inherent in a parent-child relationship. If there's an abusive parent and a dependent child, they're going to have Stockholm Syndrome and trauma bonding. Now, I will say there is a huge difference between my oldest son and my youngest son. And I believe that the big difference was that my uh, youngest son had my older son. My older son might have thought that his father, his life or death depended on his father. My younger son felt maybe like his life depended on his older brother. I think that my older son definitely, just in his very presence of being there, protected my younger son from some of the same problems. Also, their personalities were quite different. My um, my older son, I, I talked about it. I talked about it in a, um, another video. But but my their father was like a cat. I, I equated it to his father being like a cat, and then my older son was like a, a mouse, and my younger son was like a cat toy, like a a play mouse, which wasn't nearly as fun. He would play with the mouse, and by play I mean batter and and abuse and 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 all that you know um, but the the mouse that was squealing and and fighting for its life and letting you know of its terror was much more fun much more uh, rich in supply for the cat than the the mouse the, the, the cat toy so so you know, he'd play with the cat toy if the if the mouse wasn't available, but which means abuse the cat and the mouse. <laughs> but 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 mostly he neglected the um, the cat toy, and and put his aggressive over abuse on the um, 
um, the, the mouse, the older, my older son, who was much more um, reactionary, had big reactions, emotional reactions, um, self-destructive reactions, um, and also was very hungry for his father's love and approval. Um, wanted his father's love and approval so much, whereas the younger son, um, you know, was more indifferent to it. He wanted his brother's love and approval, and they, they both were very close to me, um, but the, my younger son didn't care as much about his father's love and approval um, as my older son did. He was just hungry for it, and um, and it was a real source of pain and, and agony for him. And you know, con a constant source of torment because there was no one that he abused more, um, except for me. And, and of course, he wasn't doing that to me anymore, because um, at 20 and 18, we've been divorced for 11 years. You know, I wasn't there, so he was he was getting the brunt of the of the abuse. And and, and that was the other thing that I, I this is a little off the topic of trauma bonding, but when we talk about transferring to a new a new um, abuse partner. In my case, it didn't happen. It wasn't the other woman. It wasn't. He didn't. He didn't find another. The woman that he's married to is just like him. The person he transferred it to was my son, my oldest son. He transferred the abuse to him. So that's another thing to watch for when it comes to, to when it comes to children, and these abusive relationships. The children are really the ones that you got to worry about here because, you know, you can get divorced. But they still have to go and be there, and it, and, it, and it's a terrible, a terrible position for parents to be in because you can't do anything to stop it, and um, you can't protect them when you're not there. But but you need to pay really strong attention to it because sure we help our kids are resilient, and 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 they are they are really resilient. But if you get enough stacked up against them, and especially with the amount of the, the availability of really dangerous drugs on the market now that are out there in the streets for suburban, normal, you know, kids that can get deadly drugs. If, they, if there is a sensitive kid that is uncomfortable and 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 risk and a risk taker and reckless and all of that and. Um, and sad and angry and all the things that my son was, um, he could end up in the tragic situation that my son's life has ended in and our family has ended in and his younger brother and I are left to deal with. So anyway, that's Stockholm Syndrome when it comes to a child and even an adult child. So um, Watch, watch, watch really closely if you've got children that are, that you have to send over to some narcissistically abusive person. And, and if you have just one person, if it's just one parent, you're lucky. You're lucky. Get your kid around all kinds of loving others because, because I didn't have that, my kids didn't have that either. And that was really the downfall of it was that there were, there was not enough empathic people around them to protect them because their father was allowed to get away with too much, you know, and the fact that he married someone like him made it just an impossible situation for for my son, my, both of my sons. Okay, uh, thank you for listening. Please write comments below, subscribe, and, um, and let's keep the conversation going. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.